Hey, what's up? Welcome to Double Chain News. It's Dan. It's he. All right. We always talk about the robot apocalypse. Me and Mike and I, right? We, I love that subject. Him and I both think that it's coming and there's so many signs and here's another sign and, and I really think that this one seriously needs to be looked at. Okay, and what we're talking about is, and I'll tell you what I mean in a sec. So basically, um, the first security robot has been unveiled in a Shenzhen airport in China. Okay, so when you first look at this thing, it looks like a giant, like, I don't know, dome-shaped tube on wheels, and it has a, like a police emblem. It looks like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, oh, actually, yeah, it does. It looks like the uh, R2-D2. Uh, it can travel 18 kilometers per hour, which I think is more, a little more than about 10 miles an hour, maybe a little less. So it's like a, like a slow trot, but here's the thing. It's got a, looks like it's got a taser or some kind of um, those c cattle prods. Well, yeah, well, it's number one function is that it goes around scanning people's faces. Mm -hmm. Well, it sends the information back to people who are obviously looking for terrorists or, you know, other suspects. And right. So it's really sending, it's an information collector, mostly. Mm -hmm. It scans people's faces and, um, and processes the information. So it has facial recognition um, abilities. Yeah. But, um... Otherwise, I think that if something, it was, if an emergency were to happen, it can tase someone, I guess, and bring it, someone down. It can. And here's the part that freaks me out. Like when I watch the promotional video, it's got that eerie line. It's like, so and so. It's called the Anbot. It's like, the Anbot is here to serve and protect. That is literally the plot of every single movie, like iRobot, every single movie where the robots eventually try to kill humankind. If you guys remember in iRobot, um, Will Smith is servant robot, turns rogue, and then leads an army of these indestructible servant robots to try to take over the world. Well, this thing is by no means indestructible though. True, but here's the thing. Robots don't feel pain. Ro I mean, here's the thing, right? If, okay, I could see how this could help humanity, and I could see how close it is for, to destroying humanity. Helping humanity, of course. Let's say you have these robots, you know, ideally I think this company would try to put this robot, not just in airports, but say banks, you know, apartments, whatever. Like it's a security robot. So that's applicable anywhere. It can replace literally all the security officers we have in the world today. And then some. Now, here's the scary part for me. You're letting a robot use the algorithm to determine who and what is a threat. Okay, first of all, so before the robot develops AI, which a lot of leading scientists think that eventually they will, um, they're relying on human algorithms, okay? So that is one step away from killer robots, if you think about it. Because the, and, okay, yes, by no means are they an indestructible, but it's not like a human being where if you wanted to take it down, you know, you could, and you know, the robot, like it could just run at you, it could take out the cattle prod and start prodding you, you can add mace to it. It could become a deadly weapon if you add projectiles. I mean, am I crazy to think that this is basically like, this is really so close to the robot apocalypse? Now. I think I think it's scary because um, unlike humans, you can actually inject a robot with a virus. I mean, you can inject a virus into a human too, but right. that will cause other things. But if you inject like a virus that corrupts the file or whatever, of the robot, they can actually do something that you don't want them to do, which is exactly what we're afraid of. Right. So they don't, I mean, it doesn't even have to go, it doesn't even have to develop to the point where they develop intelligence on their own. Right. Like somebody could just manipulate these robots if they figure out how to do it. There's hackers all around the world. I mean, like it's not inconceivable for them to do that. That's, okay, that's a great point. I didn't even think of that, right? So aside from, cause I'm always worried about the robot developing AI and then killing people. You're, you, have, you bring up a great point, which is what's to stop terrorists from hacking these robots and using them? Now, think about it. They don't even have to go to the airport to terrorize. They're like, why don't I just get inside of this robot, which already has weapons on it, and start terrorizing? I mean, come on. Like, no information is safe these days. You have governments, <laughs> you have governments whose computers are hacked daily. You have giant corporations whose computers are and hacked they daily. Have, they're supposed to have the most secure computers. Yeah. They're supposed to have their own group of scientists and, and computer scientists who are like guarding their computers. So I don't I don't really know. I mean, hopefully they keep a good eye on these. But yeah. other than that, I mean, I think it looks kind of cute. It, that, that's, that's, how it, that's how it starts, right? In the beginning, mm -hmm. it's cute. You give it a cute name like Anbot. And then <laughs> these kids, of course it's cute because right now it's harmless. So you see this photo of people like, it's an Anbot, and it's like it's like the first in the beginning. It's like the George Jetson toy. It's like hello, and then it becomes the one from RoboCop. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's the you, you've never seen RoboCop, but 
from a childhood, from my childhood, whenever I saw the giant um, robot with the, you guys know what I'm talking about, with the Gatling guns for its arms, as a robot trying to kill Robocop, I was afraid of like machine robots with weapons. Cause that was terrifying. So it starts out cute, and then it's full-fledged Terminator. Okay, I can see how that got there. So, right? I see your thought process. Because this is the first time now a robot has been weaponized. This is, guys, am I crazy? I mean, there's people sitting there right now being like, dude, you're overreacting. I'm like, you have weaponized a robot, put him into society to interact with humans. Do we see the problem here? It has a weapon. It is a robot. Like, I might, you know, seriously, I'm just like, before it's like, fine, that robot is like, it's all beautiful, you know, like the beauty robots or the ones where it's like greeting you when you come into the hotel or it builds something, fine. But now it's got a taser or, or a cattle prod. Well, I, you know, I get what you're saying. I think that, I also think the robot apocalypse probably will happen at some point if things develop the way they develop and we don't think about things. And, yeah. I mean, I get it. Like, we need to use certain technologies to help people. I know right. that, you know, with certain diseases, you want to be able to look into what are stem sure. cell mm -hmm. research, you know, even like cloning, like for organs. I don't really know exactly what's going on there, but somehow I feel like... I don't know. There's always some. There's always ways that a great thing could go wrong. All the time. Like, I, and all I just, the time. And I don't even know how to stop it. I'm like, if only, if only it wouldn't go wrong. If only we can take all the great things in the world. But of course, it's never. That's never the way it happens. But it's no. always like something great. It's a great start, and then it goes horribly wrong. So I'm right. like, it, it's always uh, the history goes like this. Like man tries to invent something to help humanity, but eventually it destroys humanity. Yeah, I mean, there's so many stories like that, and I'm sure it's not just pure paranoia. Yeah. I mean, there's gotta be some kind of logic behind that. I don't really appreciate anything that causes humans to become over-reliant on something that's not yeah. other humans. Like, it's not just, it's one thing about taking jobs away from people, like, you know, I know that we all have to develop, society has to improve, and tr historically, because we invented all this machinery, people's jobs got replaced, you know? But nowadays, it's just like, okay, I get it, but it's like, nowadays people are, for example, people will be more inclined to find something that's handcrafted, right? right. Something that's made by humans. It's almost as if we're, we've we come back to appreciate what the human right. human the, hands can do, what the human right. brain can do. But for a while, it was almost like machines, 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 right? But I, I don't know. I feel like when we're overly reliant on something that's not other humans, things go wrong. And, oh, yeah. and I feel like that's something is wrong with that, even though it's also necessary. To me, in a perfect world, if you have robots that protect and serve humanity, like being guards, that's great because if they, there's no way the robot can die, so it saves a person from dying if they're trying to like, you know, save you from harm, right? But that's not the world we live in. We live in a world where, you know, you have a robot there, it can be broken into, it can be taken advantage of, and then it could also go crazy and kill people, you know? So anyways, yeah, well. guys, this, I mean, Anyways, guys, this is, I, I feel like, um, you know, each time we see a robot story, it's either they're looking more and more human-like, they're being more and more automated or acting autonomous, and in this case, they're being weaponized and placed into human society to guard humans. So I feel like we're getting close, guys. Let us know what you think of this story and the robot apocalypse and robots in general. Thank you very much for watching. See you Bye. later.